Kai. Did two videos tonight. <clears throat> these proofs, some of these took me probably uh, three or four months each of accumulating the verses. Because as I'd go through the Gospels or go through it over and over and over and over and put notes, it's like, oh wait, this verse answers this question, this verse answers that question. And uh, this isn't, you know, people accuse me of uh, cherry picking, they accuse me of verse stacking. And it's like, when you're doing videos and sharing stuff, how else do you do? You read eight verses, but your point is one verse? See, so I give you the highlight verses. And so, once I started focusing on Yeshua, what he taught, and then I focus on what Paul taught. Today we're going to focus on what Paul taught. People tell me there is, both of them are preaching the same thing. Paul mixes Jesus' gospel with his own personal gospel. And he's, you're going to see, I'm going to ask you, do you believe what Paul says? See, you people don't want to reject Paul, but they also don't believe what he says. Because I give people verses what he says, and they'll run right over. That's the biggest thing when you're debating. Let's stick to one area, one verse, one section. Don't jump all over the place, because pretty soon you got verse wars, and all you're doing is battling it out, and you're losing friends. If your friends really want to know the truth, they will examine stuff. Like I had people in the very beginning who would say stuff to me. I would go home and examine it. And then I read it and studied it out, and then I understood it better. But they did not come back and say, oh, let's sit down and do it together. They just rejected what I said. <clears throat> this is proof number seven. <clears throat> the grace given to Paul. Paul's gospel is saved by grace. Grace alone. Faith only. Jesus does everything. You don't have to do anything except have faith and believe. 1 Corinthians 3, 10, verses 10, 11, 14, and 15. So you can read that whole section. Now listen to Paul. He's explaining to you. And if you like Paul and you're following him, you need to listen to his words. Okay? And we're going to see if you believe it. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building upon it. Let each one of us take care how he builds on it. For no one lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now you're going to notice that Paul will tack Jesus' name onto something to give it validity, to get it to pass to where you'll accept it. He didn't say which is Jesus Christ. People might question that. Verse 14. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. Again, once saved, always saved. You know, Paul, some people say Paul didn't teach that, but he taught, taught both ways, okay? <clears throat> that was 14 and 15. Romans 2.16, on that day when, according to my gospel, God judges the secrets of men by Christ Jesus. So he has his gospel. If you're following it, you'll be judged according to the secrets of Christ Jesus. For years, I thought Paul was personalizing the gospel. But then I realized you're going to see his own words. Romans 16, 25. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the mystery that was kept secrets for long ages. Now this is my question. Why did Jesus just say, why did he just say the gospel of Jesus Christ? Why did he say my gospel? See, he splits the two up. That's the key. He splits it up. Anybody, uh, I keep thinking of these moving companies. You've got a worldwide moving company. And another company, all they have to do 
is come in and have their own rules, their own regulations, but their truck looks just like another moving company. So you think you're hiring that moving company, but you find out later that it's not the same company, but you already signed the contracts. That's just what Paul does. <clears throat> Acts 20, verse 24b. The mystery that I received from Jesus Christ to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. There's no witnesses to that. Most of the time his testimony, the guy's in here. And Ananias, everybody says, well, what about Ananias came? And he said, God talked. He said, he said, he said. Was there any firsthand? Only Paul was there. Was Ananias, he said, I found a disciple. Was it one of Paul's disciples? Did Satan tell, use him? Because the guy's in the visions and dreams, wonders and signs and wonders. These are I just ask questions, folks. All I'm doing is asking questions. People get really, really defensive because your heart is set on Paul and not on the Lord, our Father in heaven. Matthew 24, 25 and 26. This is the key verse. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great, great signs and wonders, as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect, those who elect to follow the Father, not the ones that God picks and chooses and dumps other people. Verse 25, see, I have told you before, he taught his true apostles, if any, if, if they say that, look, he is in the wilderness. Do not go out. If he says he's in the upper room, do not believe it. When Paul came to the true apostles and said, I seen Jesus out on the road to Damascus, their minds going, Jesus said, don't believe the person who says they seen me out in the road. Jesus prepped them and warned them. Colossians 1, 6b since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth. If you look at Strong's Concordance, Jesus, Yeshua, never once said the word grace. But it does say, the, the, the translators try to back up Paul. So sometimes they'll say Jesus grew in favor with God and man. When the word is actually grace. But they interchange what they want to cover up. I stop. But just as we have been approved, oh, this is uh, 1 Thessalonians 1.4, 1 Thessalonians 1.4, just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, which gospel? He tells readers what to believe. Which gospel? See, if your presupposition says there's only one gospel in the whole New Testament, then you won't see this, you won't believe it. 2 Thessalonians 2.14, to this he called you through our gospel, so that you, etc., etc. Ephesians 3.2 That you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you. See how convincing it is? Pastors are verbal manipulators. Some of them, many of them. They know how to work you. They can be verbal abusers. They know how to make you feel guilty if you don't come to church. They make you feel guilty if you don't support them. They make you feel, they know how to manipulate you. And the only way we can do it is be in our own rooms in our closets and shut the door and ask the Holy Spirit for guidance. My question for you on this, <clears throat> see if you can answer this. Why would Jesus train 14 men to carry on his ministry for three years and not tell them of a different gospel of grace alone? Why would he do that? Why? Three years of ministry, he did nothing but back up the commandments, back up and, and make it clear about the commandments for us. And Paul clearly said, that they are destroyed. But Jesus said, and the translators made it, that Jesus said that I did not abolish them, I fulfilled them. But Paul makes grace or, or <coughs> salvation imputed, like he you get his stuff, 
No, that's not. He said, Yeshua never ever said that. We have to be righteous before the Father. Yeshua, we can be, the Father can forgive our sins, but we are to walk righteous and do loving kindness things. Okay. I got my papers mixed up because I had the wrong things on here. <clears throat> or I missed it. One of them was three and one of them was two. Okay, this is proof number eight. This one, I literally almost rolled off my bed laughing that I didn't catch this over all these years. I just could not believe this it was so evident until I studied out the book of Acts and I went through every single line, every single sentence, and I made highlights of what was the event, what took place, when did it take place, and just completely mapped out the entire book of Acts. That's what you do in a Bible study. Sounds boring to you? Now, that's exciting. You'll find all kinds of things. Peter eating with the Jews. Hmm. Now these are highlight verses, but some of these verses in the book of Acts actually jumps chapters. So you've got to watch this. You've got to follow and pay attention. Because there's little events that happen in between the larger events. Does that make sense? Acts 9 26 and 27, when he saw, this is the beginning, has come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples, and they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe that he was a disciple. Again, I shared this on another video that I used to think this was the apostles. I said, no, the disciples. Why? Because the apostles taught them not to believe anybody like that. Verse 27, but Barnabas took him brought Saul to the apostles and described for them how on the road he had seen the Lord. Let's see, Barnabas wasn't taught by Jesus. He's a new disciple. He's a nice guy. He's an encouraging person. He wants, he's a follower. And that's why I think he followed Paul. He thought very highly of Paul. People who want to support others sometimes will get trapped in the charisma of the person they're following. Acts 9.30b And the apostles sent Saul away. They brought Saul down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. Where was Saul from? Tarsus. Okay, now keep that in mind. Where rest? Chapter 9. Okay, let's keep that in mind. Let's, okay, see, oh yeah, let me finish. The disciples uh, the true apostles recall Jesus' words, which I just read, Matthew 24, 24 through 26, okay? If you see me in the wilderness, okay? Now Saul is gone. And in Acts 11, see, he went from 9 to 11, Acts 11, 1 through 18, but I'm not going to read all of it. But you read the text when you get time. Now the apostles and the brothers were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised party criticized him saying, verse three, when you, you went to the uncircumcised and you ate with them, verse four, but Peter began and explained in the order, and then if you jump down and keep following it through, they all talk and said, Here's his vision from the Lord. And they all believed. They all believed. He didn't cower. He didn't walk away. He didn't hide. This is Peter baptized with the Holy Ghost who walked with Jesus three years, who denied Jesus, who saw Jesus die, who saw Jesus rose, who ate with Jesus afterwards. Now think about that. Look at the character of Yeshua. It makes me mad sometimes. But anyway, Acts 11.25. So Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. Okay. Barnabas was sent down there to uh, wherever he was sent to to deliver something to the brothers and sisters. But he says he went on over. It, nowhere does it say that Barnabas was sent to go get Paul. But let's hear what Paul says when he writes to the Galatians. Because Paul knows that the Galatians weren't there. Okay. Let's jump over to the Galatians here. Galatians 2.1 
that after, this is Paul's word, do you believe Paul? After 14 years I saw, went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus along with me. That's his own words. That is when he's going to go to the uh, convention or whatever they, uh, seminars or I can't think of what the word is. But uh, to meet with them, they're all going to talk about circumc circumcision and the Gentiles and stuff like that. After 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas. Where was Paul? He was not there when Peter was eating with the circumcision party. And the circumcision party got after him. Paul wasn't there. He, his own words say he was at this other place, Tarsus or wherever. Let's see what he says to the Galatians. So, see, he's talking to Barney, and he's telling Barney some stuff. And Barney tells him about the circumcision and tells him about the whole story. Barney tells him all about the Acts 11 event. Think about it. He, he, Barney tells him. How else would Paul know? He wasn't there. He's been gone for 14 years. Galatians 2.12-16, through 16. so Saul writes to the Galatians who weren't there, who doesn't know that he wasn't there. For before certain men came from James, he, Peter, was eating with the Gentiles, and when the Jews came, he drew back and separated himself, fearing the circumcision party. 13, and the rest of the Jews acted hypocritically along with him so that even Barney, Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. Good heavens, he throws Barnabas away and Barnabas under the, under the bus and he thinks, he, he thinks that, anyway, Barney thinks highly of him. It's a historical fact that Saul wrote the Galatians letter from Tarsus. I don't know where I got that. I read it someplace and I should have wrote it down. The only way Saul knew about Barnabas was about this was by Barnabas. Saul wrote a direct lie because later on if you read what he says up to verse 16 he tried to rip him a new one. So the Galatians are thinking down on Peter and the rest of the people while Paul builds himself up and he wasn't even there. Please prove to me this is a direct lie. I mean not a direct lie. I've gone over and over the texts, different version, over my Hebrew Bible with the Greek uh, stuff, gone over and checked everything. Paul was not there when Barnabas saw it, but he told Luke about it when Luke was writing the book of Acts. You've got to watch who says it and when they say it. Who did they say it to? What was the circumstance? Did Paul know that his letter would eventually be put side to side and we could compare his letters? My whole attitude, I don't hate Paul. I still question whether he did this on purpose or if he pride during my rebellious time against the Lord. I can't believe that I put my finger in his face and told him to leave me alone and I'll leave you alone. That's how wicked I was. I was going to a Saved by Grace church thinking I'd help these people and all I did was get into their beliefs and follow them and weaken it. They're enjoying sin. Why can't I enjoy sin? See? Paul blames... Anyway, that's a whole other thing. So, Father, you are so wonderful. You put this book together. You helped inspire people, but that does not mean it is all of your words. You want to test this. When I found out about Deuteronomy 13, Paul fell and into it and he fits every single description because my heart had turned toward Paul and away from the, my first love, my Messiah, the Lord Jesus, who forgave me and came into my life and changed my life and everybody in my families and relationships and friends and trained buddies, everyone, everybody knew it. It could not have been Marty making this up. My first love. I'm back to my first love. I praise you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.